Hello, this is Daniel Mart, and today I'm going to be doing a review for Kill Shakespeare Volume 1. So yeah, before I begin though, um, I do want to say that last year I reviewed Volume 2. Um, so yeah, so I will leave an annotation somewhere here for those who want to check it out. I reviewed Volume 2 last year. Um, don't ask me why, I probably explained it in that video. Um, basically, the reason I got Volume Two first is because the guy, um, Connor McCree, was the guy I got it from, and he autographed it, signed it, whatever. Uh, this book right there. Um, what does it say here? Yeah, now you can see where it all began because I got Volume Two first. Um, because he ran out of Volume One, so I read Volume Two first, liked it, and then I got Volume One. So, yeah. 10 second spoiler warning as usual for those who have yet to actually watch, read the graphic novel, Kill Shakespeare Volume 1 and haven't already, stop the video, go check it out and come back and watch the rest of this review. 10 second spoiler warning as usual starting now. Okay, so 10 seconds are up, so for those who have yet to actually read this graphic novel and haven't already, um, please don't comment down below or be messaging me that I never gave you a fair warning because as usual, I did. So basically, this is comic books and Shakespeare combined. And, yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, basically, you have um, Antelo, I believe. It's the guy's name. You have Antelo, uh, yeah, Antelo, Bautstaff, Hamlet, and Juliet. Um... And basically, they're tr and they're trying to find um, Shakespeare, who they believe to be a wizard. Um, they're trying to find him so they they could help um, help they get get help to defeat the Shadow King, or you know at least as get associated with ch with the Shadow King. So yeah, uh, on the flip side, you have Richard the Third, Iago, and Lady Macbeth, and they're trying to stop this because it seems like they actually like the Shadow King, or something like that. So yeah, and the the writing here is all Shakespearean. You know, it says, um, you know, it says it's all Shakespearean. You know, Doth. Um, you know, let me let me get a good example of what Shakespearean language is. Uh, you know, it's, you know, you know, stuff like My Lord, um, you know, Prudent, Wary. Your bright sword here. Yeah, it's you know it's all like Shakespearean stuff. I mean, it's hard to explain to you know Shakespearean writing if you really haven't seen it. You know, it's, you know, like it's all like Doth, Shaw, um, amongst um, Didith thy do, for example. Thou shalt not kill, for example. Um. I don't know, but I mean, doesn't explic explic it doesn't really say these words straight out. Maybe a few of them, um, but you know, that, that's just to give an example. So it does. So yeah, um, McCree, I believe, is a writer, and he does a good job at writing um, with the Shakespearean stuff. I mean, you, you do have to know a little bit about Shakespearean language in order to understand the book. And you know, lucky for me, I do know a bit of Shakespearean language. Um, I'm just suck at explaining it. So yeah. Um, so, you know, the writing is pretty cool, you know, to see, you know, it's all Shakespearean and stuff. Um, not something you really see every day. I mean, the only time you ever read Shakespeare stuff is when you're reading Shakespeare or you're, or you're watching a movie based on Shakespeare. Um, you tend not to read other things that are based on Shakespeare because, um, first off, there's not really much. And usually the stuff you do read that's based off Shakespeare is a Shakespeare book that's been translated from old English to modern English. So, yeah, it's pretty cool to see a comic book in Shakespearean language as a whole. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, the the art. Who's the artist on this? Who is the artist on this? Um, Andy Bellinger, or Bellinger. Um, he's a pretty good artist and overall pretty cool. Um, pretty good art. I do like it. Um, there are a few times though. Um, especially with the eyes though, um, it just seems a little bit odd. Um, the eyes, I just feel like he does it a little bit weird at times. Um, but aside from that, the art's pretty cool, pretty good. Um, so yeah, so this 
compiles the first six issues of the series and I feel like the first two issues were really fast paced um, which is good and you know one aspect because you know it's really fast paced and you do like it but at the same time you know, it's kind of it's kind of a negative because after the first two issues it, they do start to slow down and, and it really doesn't really pick up you know fast pace that much so yeah I mean overall the pacing is pretty good but you know it goes really fast paced and then just like drops um, just like really fast paced and then kind of just drops and then stays you know um, moderately you know well paced for the most part but you know really fast then boom so yeah the pacing does have a few pacing, pro pacing problems um, but yeah I mean overall it's a pretty good pretty good book I do recommend you guys checking it out if you like stuff with Shakespeare and you know comics as a whole and yeah I'm gonna rate from one to ten, one being the worst, ten being the best, and six being decent. I give this graphic novel an eight out of ten. It's a pretty good graphic novel. Do check it out. And that's really basically it for this review. Subscribe if you're not resubscribed. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. So definitely do stay tuned for that. Besides that, comment down below your thoughts on the graphic novel. You know, Kill Shakespeare Volume One. You know, what do you think about it? You know, comment all that down below. Let me know. Um, yeah, the official volume is called. Kill Shakespeare, A Sea of Troubles. So, yeah, that's the volume title right there. So, yeah, that's basically it for this review. Subscribe, comment down below, like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.